And so you return. Have you gained a better understanding of the crisis now faced by the First? Better is not the word I would use. Some lands may have been spared the Flood, but the survivors live only to suffer. There seems no end to the horrors inflicted by the Sin Eaters. Indeed. Those abominations are a calamity in their own right. And I can well imagine how hopeless the task of eradicating them must seem to you. But after countless battles and untold sacrifice, we have identified a potential weakness. Sin Eaters are drawn to serve the strongest of their kind, a class of creature we call Light Wardens. And from what we have been able to ascertain, only a handful of these entities exist. Just as an ant colony will perish in the absence of its queen, we believe that the death of a Light Warden will cause the lesser creatures within its sphere of influence to disperse. I have a feeling Yulmul might have something to say about any concerted action we take against these monsters. Vorthra's command over the Sin Eaters is integral to Yulmoran society. In seeming to guarantee his people's safety, it guarantees their obedience. He will not take kindly to us depriving him of such useful allies. Agreed. Thus we will need to occupy or otherwise divert his forces whilst we proceed with the business of eliminating the Wardens. Until we have done so, all other considerations must be set aside if we are to forestall the Eighth Umbral Calamity. Your uncertainty is understandable, given the circumstances. Perhaps a more detailed explanation is in order. To begin at the beginning, then. In the ancient past, a single star was divided into 14 worlds. This is the source, your home. These others are the thirteen shards, in whose number we find the first. Though physically separate, they retain a connection to each other, and with the source especially. Now, let us assume that a given element in one of the shards attains abnormal ascendancy. Just as water will flow from the highest point to the lowest, the excess energy will begin trickling into the source. And such an influx of ether will of course exert a palpable influence. If the element in question were fire, then drought and wildfires might ensue. If it were ice, one might expect the weather to turn bitterly cold. As ether continues to pour in, such phenomena will become more and more extreme, until eventually, a single, untimely event triggers a disaster which cracks the barrier dividing the two worlds. What was once a trickle now becomes a deluge, sweeping the shard along to be rejoined with the source. At the same time, the element which held sway in the shard is unleashed in full, its energies amplifying the original disaster to truly catastrophic proportions. An earthquake thus magnified might strike with enough force to shatter continents, a tidal wave might swell to a size capable of drowning entire nations. These devastating events are what we refer to as umbral calamities. Seven times has a calamity befallen the source. Seven times has a shard been absorbed.
present, the light drowned realm of the first stands perilously close to meeting the conditions for a rejoining. It is the Sin Eaters who are to blame for the light's continued dominance. In addition to attracting their lesser kin, the Light Wardens I mentioned earlier radiate ether, saturating every corner of their territory with light. Even here in the flood-spared region of Norvrant, their influence is strong enough to banish night from the sky. Thus, if we are to restore balance to the first and head off a potential calamity, it is imperative that we put each and every Light Warden to the sword. We've been doing our best to take the fight to the enemy ever since we first heard the Exarch's explanation. Though we have yet to claim any meaningful victories, if truth be told. Apart from being confoundingly elusive, the Light Wardens possess a troublesome quality which compelled us to delay our plans until such time as you arrived. Forgive the interruption, my lord, but Holminster Switch is requesting reinforcements. They say the Sin Eaters are attacking in force, and the village could soon be overrun. Alert the guard. We should be prepared in case the fighting reaches the Crystarium. You have command of our forces in the field, Captain, but hold off on entering the town until I arrive. That goes for Alphano and Alize as well. My lord. Pray, lend us your strength. Such a fight will provide you with far greater insight than any explanation I could offer. It's releasing its ether! Fall back! We cannot let it touch us! Quickly, my lord, we must withdraw! That will not be necessary, Captain. Though I appreciate your concern, the eternal light of these creatures has confounded us for nigh on a hundred years. For each we have put down, another has risen up in its place, born of the self-same ether relinquished by its predecessor. But now we have a way to contain that corruption. The blessing of light, and the hero who wields it now stands before you. Behold, the monster's power is broken, and the world, twisted by its touch, returns to its rightful form.
scar. It can't be. What's happening? It's so beautiful. The sunless sea. The warrior of darkness has come. Is that what I think it is? The night sky, as it should be. Who are you people? You killed a warden, then bathed in its ether as if it were a spring shower, and now the sky? The legends are true. My lord? How many years have I waited for this moment? For the one possessed of her blessing? For you? You have vanquished the Light Warden of Lakeland, and for the first time in a century, darkness has returned to the mantle of night. Without the ever-present light to sustain them, the Sin Eaters will have no choice but to retreat. Yet our victory is far from complete. Though darkness has fallen here, the other Wardens yet bask beneath burning skies, feasting upon what little life remains. Even should it cost me all I have, I would see each and every one of them slain that this world might be spared from oblivion. Not only for the first, but for the source as well. Save one, and we save the other. But, be that as it may, I concede it was wrong of me to summon you to this fight against your will. I swear on my life, I will one day atone for that deed. But for the present, I beg you, stay and see this fight to its conclusion. Cast down the Wardens and restore darkness to the first. On behalf of the first, I offer you my deepest thanks. I understand there is much at stake here, Exarch, but why do you risk yourself so readily? It must have been a dangerous drain on your ether to summon even one person across the rift. I do it for my people, of course. To give the Crystarium the tomorrow it deserves. That is true now, yes, but the city had yet to be built when you first called forth the Crystal Tower. I'm simply curious to know what prompted you to commit yourself so completely to this particular course. There are things which we can ill afford to lose. And I sensed from the first that I had a part to play in preserving them. <laughs> Forgive me. I fear the events of the day may have taken their toll. Despite appearances, I am an old man. One burdened with many difficult memories, some too painful to recall. Well then, I'm sorry for pressing you. It's a family failing, I'm afraid. <laughs> One which has served us well more often than not. Needless to say, we will continue to fight at your side until the last Sin Eater is defeated. Come then. My warriors of darkness, 
Let us gather the surviving villagers and make our way back to the Crystarium.